Good afternoon, Ms. Lidok Sambales. Good afternoon to our beloved learners from grade 9. Time check, it's 1.30 in the afternoon, October 6, 2020. This is your on-air teacher, Teacher Brian Estigoy, always at the service for the Filipino learners. Yours truly is from Bamban National High School. I will facilitate you in maximizing your participation as you learn today's lesson. Welcome to English 9 class, a new venture in learning language and Anglo-American literature. I will guide you in the first quarter on the first lesson this week. Are you all ready, students, to embark on the first journey toward learning English via radio? Wow, that's great! This morning, make sure that you are all in your comfortable seats and properly listening to our broadcast. May I just ask, have you eaten your meal already? Wow, yes, sana all! That's great! If you have a full tummy, so your mind are set, and be ready for our session today. At this moment, please get your learning activity sheets, prepared by Ms. Sherlyn Mulyado, Teacher 3 of Lipay National High School, Santa Cruz District, distributed by your respective school for our topic today. You can also get your notebook and call them to take the notes about the lesson that I'm going to discuss. Grade 9 English subject concentrates on the grade level standard in which the learner demonstrates communicative competence through his or her understanding of British American literature, including Philippine literature and other text types for a deeper appreciation of Philippine culture and those of other countries. So, our lesson for today is about models. Yes, you heard it right. Models. In this lesson, you will express permission, obligation, and prohibition using models. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to identify model verbs expressing permission, obligation, and prohibition. Perform mind-body coordination tasks, body teaser, and fun speaking exercises. And construct sentences using model verbs of permission, obligation, and prohibition. Language is used to inform others, to ask them to do certain things, and to express feelings, moods, ideas, information, experiences, and others. Undoubtedly, model has a very important purpose used for communication. Using the correct grammar when speaking and writing is important to avoid misunderstandings it helps the other person understand you easily. If you fail to use the appropriate words, you will slow down communication and conversations, and you will find it harder to express your ideas clearly and concisely. When you are able to express yourself, you are able to feel more complete. Self-expression will help you free your mind and enjoy life. In this lesson, you will learn more about expressing permission, 
obligation and prohibition. Now, I want you to look at your copy of the article on page 2 of your learning activity sheets. Please listen attentively as I read to you the article. Some sentences contain modal verbs. Please locate them. Are you all ready students to listen? Here we go. What should make up a strong family? that possesses good family values. It is the family that sustains its members, that supports and nourishes each other throughout the span of that family. A strong family unit has to create a safe, positive, and supportive place for all members to thrive. They are able to utilize resources and live together in a fairly healthy manner. Cohesion. In families, cohesion would be defined as the feeling of being loved, of belonging to the group, and being nurtured by it. A person must be able to develop their individuality while being supported and confident within the family. Flexibility. There must be a structure in a family or it will become chaotic and it will not be a peaceful setting for a family. Conversely, there must be flexibility, or the family becomes rigid and the authority figures are resented. Communication Things that facilitate communication are things mentioned so far family closeness, flexibility, time spent together, spirituality. All members must feel a freedom within the group to express themselves freely. A healthy, happy family benefits our whole society. Among the children of strong families, there is less crime, less divorce, and less emotional problems. They tend to go on and have strong, healthy families of their own having learned from their fox example. Now, I will give you four sentences taken from the article I have just read. Take them as an example. First sentence. A strong family unit has to create a safe, positive, and supportive place for all members to thrive. I repeat. A strong family unit has to create a safe, positive, and supportive place for all members to thrive. Second sentence, there must be a structure in a family or it will become chaotic and will not be a peaceful setting for a family. I repeat, there must be a structure in a family or it will become chaotic and it will not be a peaceful setting for a family. Third sentence, all members must feel a freedom within the group to express themselves freely. I repeat, all members must feel a freedom within the group to express themselves freely. Fourth and last sentence, a person must be able to develop their individuality while being supported and confident within the family. I repeat, a person must be able to develop their individuality while being supported and confident within the family. What do the highlighted words express? They express obligation. When do we usually use them? We use them to add meaning to main verb in a sentence. What are they called? We call them model verbs. What are model verbs? A model is a type of auxiliary or helping verb 
that is used to express ability, possibility, permission, and obligation. Very good. That's right. Modal verbs, also called modal auxiliaries or simply models, are a type of auxiliary verb or helping verb. They are used to express possibility, permission, and obligation. They are used with a main verb to form a sentence or a question. Modal verbs are not conjugated and cannot be used without a main verb. In this lesson, you'll learn different modal verbs and when to use them. Let's take modal verbs that express obligation. There are two types of modal verbs of obligation. Those that primarily express a firm obligation or necessity. Must and have to. And those that express a recommendation or moral obligation. Should and ought to. First modal verb of obligation, must. We use must to talk about obligations. Often, when we use must, the authority for the obligation comes from the person who is speaking. I repeat, we use must to talk about obligations. Often, when we use must, the authority for the obligation comes from the person who is speaking. First example, you must wear your face mask every time you go out. I repeat, you must wear your face mask every time you go out. A modern mask is used in a sentence and the authority for obligation comes from the person who is speaking. Second example, I must stop spitting in public areas. I repeat, I must stop spitting in public areas. Again, a model must is used in a sentence and the authority for obligation comes from the speaker. Second model verb of obligation has to or have to. We can also use has to or have to to talk about rules and regulations. The authority for the obligation doesn't come from the person who is speaking. Perhaps the rule is a general law or obligation. I repeat, we can also use has to or have to to talk about rules and regulations. The authority for the obligation doesn't come from the person who is speaking. Perhaps the rule is a general law or obligation. Take note, use has to if the subject of the sentence is singular and have to if the subject of the sentence is plural. I repeat, use has to if the subject of the sentence is singular and have to if the subject of the sentence is plural. First example, we have to present our travel pass to the authority when passing quarantine checkpoints. I repeat, we have to present our travel pass to the authority when passing quarantine checkpoints. A modal verb, have to, is used in a sentence because it talks about a certain rule and regulation. Second example, they have to do it to stop the spread of the virus. I repeat, they have to do it to stop the spread of the virus. Again, a modal verb have to is used because it talks about a certain rule and regulation. Now, let's have modal verbs that express permission. May, 
could and can can be used to give or ask for permission. This part will show you how to use may, could, and can. First modal verb of permission, may and its uses. May can be used when asking permission in a polite way. I repeat, may can be used when asking permission in a polite way. First example, may I see your travel pass? I repeat, may I see your travel pass? Second example, may I use the store's hand washing area? I repeat, may I use the store's hand washing area? May is used when giving polite answers. First example, of course you may. I repeat, of course you may. Second example, I'm sorry you may not. I repeat, I'm sorry you may not. Second modal verb of permission, could. No, could is a less formal than using may. I repeat, could is less formal than using may. First example, could I bring friends to the party? I repeat, could I bring friends to the party? Second example, could I have more calamansi juice? I repeat, could I have more calamansi juice? Third modal verb of permission, can. Note, can is least formal of the modal verbs used to ask permission. I repeat, can is the least formal of the modal verbs used to ask permission. First example, can I pass through without my community ID? I repeat, can I pass through without my community ID? Second example, can she come with me to Candelaria? I repeat, can she come with me to Candelaria? Now, let's have modal verbs that express prohibition. Modal verbs are used for prohibition. These situations are the opposite of giving permission. This part will show you on how to use may and can to prohibit someone or create rules. The modal verbs used are may and can. They are used as negatives can or cannot, mustn't or must not, and may not. First modal verb of prohibition, can't or cannot. Can't or cannot is used to prohibit something. Note, it's a most commonly used model of prohibition. I repeat, can't or cannot is used to prohibit something. It's a most commonly used model of prohibition. First example, you just can't walk outside without your mask on. I repeat, you just can't walk outside without your mask on. Second example, we can't talk to strangers. That's what Papa said. I repeat, we can't talk to strangers that's what Papa said. Can't is normally used to show inability. But in these examples, it shows prohibition. It is like you are saying you do not have the ability because of the rules. Now, let's have the two more formal ways to prohibit something. Second modal verb of prohibition, may not. Note, we use may not to prohibit something in a formal way. I repeat, 
we use may not to prohibit something in a formal way. First example, you may not enter the office with your baby sister. I repeat, you may not enter the office with your baby sister. Second example, she may not wear her shoes inside the house. I repeat, she may not wear her shoes inside the house. Because may is the most formal, you will often see it in writing. Finally, let's have the strongest way to prohibit something. Third model verb of prohibition, mustn't or must not. First example, Peter must not try to pass the checkpoint without his papers and documents. I repeat, Peter must not try to pass the checkpoint without his papers and documents. Second example, Jane must not bring the children out during these days. It's too dangerous. I repeat, Jane must not bring the children out during these days. It's too dangerous. This is the third way you can prohibit an action or make a rule against something. These are model verbs you can use for prohibition. So, that's how you learn model verbs in the new normal way. Alright, you can practice your skills more expressing obligation and prohibition using models by doing your activity sheets. I hope you learned from this discussion. Let me discover whether you have attained the learning competency from your learning activity sheet on the model verbs through the outputs you will be submitting. You will always bear in mind that there are better things than getting high scores. What is important is you learn from your mistakes and become better learner at the end. Our dear parents, your guidance can make a difference on how well your children can accomplish these learning tasks. Kindly provide assistance. Thank you. If you have questions, just message your English teachers. I am sure they could help you. I know you can do it learners. God bless in answering your learning activity sheets. Once again, this is your radio teacher, Teacher Brian Estigoy of Bamban National High School. Goodbye everyone and have a good day.